The Field Day from the Black Lagoon Chapter 1 The Agony of the Feet Coach Kong marches us into the gym and lines us up. He paces back and forth, holding his clipboard. Next Friday, we're having a field day, he declares. He reads off some of the events from his list. I nervously start picking at the rubber on my sneakers. It sounds like the script for an action movie. Parachute, says Coach Kong. Do we have to jump out of an airplane? Obstacle courses, he continues. Do we have to run through fire, leap over lions, hop over hippos, skip through snakes, and tiptoe around tigers? Then there's Charlie over the water. They fill a big tank with hungry sharks and throw us in it. That gets you ready for a one-legged race. I don't think I feel so good. I asked Coach, Coach Kong if everyone has to be at the field day. He just laughs and say, It'll be a day you'll never forget. Chapter 2. Lunch time. At lunch, we eat big bean burritos and look over the stuff to do at, Friday, at next Friday's field day event. There's the big bean toss. That should be easy. We just ate them. There's another event called Scarf Tag. Eric says they should make an event called Barf Tag because it would be so cool and gross. Some of the girls move to another table. It's so easy to make them queasy. We read off another one. Three-legged race. That should require major surgery. Ouch! Then there's the tug of war. This is going to be survival of the fittest. I don't fit at all. Who knows? Maybe I'll win the sack rack. I am a good sleeper. Penny and Dory say they will luck out and win a bunch of events like jump rope, hula hoop, and egg race. Freddy's interested in all the food events. He wants to win. Candy walk. Cookie Factory, and Bubblegum. He's starting to train right now by seeing how many pieces of bubblegum he can fit in his mouth at the same time. By the time the bell rings, he's up to 11. Chapter 3. Olem Pickles On the way home, all the kids are talking about the field day. Freddy says it's just like the Olympics. That's right. I think we'll all limb home. I'm a good jumper, brags Derek. I'm a good bumper, blurps Freddy. I'm fast, declares Randy. I'm last, I sighed For the rest of the way home, Eric and I discuss the situation. There's not going to be even one video game. Bummer. So we're going to have to get into shape. But... What shape should we get into? Square? Round? Triangle? Eric says, muscle! We need muscles. Fast! What about clams? I ask. Do we need clams too? He rolls his eyes and says, we have to get fit, hubby. To fit what? I ask. Eric says that he's going to get fit and I should shape up. It's all too confusing. I just stare out the window and count red convertibles. Chapter 4. Muscle Bound When I get home, I realize Eric had a point, and it wasn't just the top of his head. I need some muscles, quick, if I want to win any events. On TV that night, there's an ad for muscles. It's a complete bodybuilding system for $19.95. Normally, it sells for $385, but if you call it in the next five minutes, they'll cut the price in half to $9.97. It's called Wimflex, and it guarantees muscles in eight days or your money back. The fill day is in six days. Maybe I could go from total wimp to almost wonderful. I check my piggy bank. I have $10. I'm on my way. I call in. Look out, Phil Day, here I come. I set off my money and wait. 
Every day, I check the mailbox after school. Days pass. I'm getting weaker and weaker. Then, three days later, it comes. My complete Wimflex bodybuilding system. I eagerly open the little box. It's a rubber band and a booklet. Well, I read the booklet and started right away to make up for lost time. Maybe I can go from shrimp to strongman before the field day. Chapter 5 My Perplex Machine. The first exercise is for abs. What's an ab? It says, lie down. That's easy. I can do that. Then it says, sit up. I just lay down and got comfortable. Why would I sit up? I move on to the next section. It says, biceps. Do I have to buy something else? There's a picture of an arm. Okay. It says, put your wimp flex around a door handle and pull. It's a silly way to open a door, but I'll try it. While I'm pulling, mom opens the door and my rubber band snaps. I go flying across the room. Well, so much for biceps. Maybe I won't need them for field day. The next exercise is for pecs. And the one after that is for thighs. I think this is a bodybuilding system for chickens. I want my money back. I phone the number on the booklet. A man answers. I tell him that I'm not satisfied. He says that my Wimflex is guaranteed to give me muscles. Then he asks if I'm holding up the phone. I say yes. He says that if I'm holding the phone, I have muscles. And then I hear a click. I look at my $997 rubber band and start to feel sad. I just got combed. Chapter 6 A Healthy Attitude. The next day, Mom tells me that walking is the best exercise. I can walk, so I am in good shape. She also says that a well-balanced diet is important. She claims, you are what you eat. So I ask for a hot dog. I'd like to be a hot dog at the field day. Later that day, I go to the health store, health food store. The shelves are loaded with products and promises. Power Powder says that it can give you a healthier body in three days. Another is called Energizer. I don't want to eat a battery, though. There's even some stuff called Muscle Maker and another thing called Punny Pills. I don't think I want any of them. I walk farther into the store and there's row after row of powders, pills, and potions that all say they are packed with power. Each one promises a healthier body in three minutes or three days. There are brown bars, force flakes, and power tabs that straighten, invigorate, and fortify. There's even there's another product called Lightning Bar. One bite will turn you into an Olympic champion, and two bites will give you the power to fly. I don't think there's a flying competition at the field day. Another aisle contains a whole alphabet of vitamins and minerals, and all the store signs says that you need to buy them all. Then there's a weird food area. Hot dogs made from cereal, cereal made from seaweed, and there's tofu, which sounds like it comes from in between your toes. Gross. And it's all really, really expensive. I wonder if they'd like to buy my rubber band. Chapter 7. Pick on me. I'm in training. I mean, I played with my electric train for hours. Nobody at school notices my new muscles, but I know they're under my shirt somewhere. Coach Kong says it's time to choose teams for tomorrow's field day. Eric and Derek are the captains. We all line up and they just flip a coin to see who goes first. Eric wins and picks. Freddy, who now can get 26 pieces of bubble gum into his mouth. I flex my bicep, but Derek picks Randy because he's the fastest kid in class. 
Then I flex my abs, and Eric picks me because he's my best friend. That just leaves Doris and Penny. Doris weighs more than Penny, so we could use her as an anchor for a team. Well, Derek picks her, and Penny joins our team. She's very thin. Maybe we could use her as a rope. That might be helpful. I wish Superman or Hulk was on our team. Oh well, we'll have to do our best without them. After school, I ride my bike to a local gym. Standing by the door, I watch other people work out. Boy, they sweat a lot. They smell too. Yuck. Then I ride over to the health food store and breathe in the air. I hope some of it will make me healthier and stronger. I'm doing everything I can to get into shape. I even read my Wimflex booklet over again. I hope that is some sort of exercise. After work, I watch a bodybuilding movie and pray that my muscles can see how rock hard they should be. I hope that I am ready for tomorrow. Chapter Eight: Doom and Gloom. Later that night, I have a nightmare. Well, it's more like a field mare. Yikes! It's tomorrow, and the field day has started. Derek, Randy, and Doris have all grown into ten foot tall giants. Coach Kong has joined their team as well. They even have team uniforms and a team name, the Giant. Eric, Freddy, Penny, and I are called the Wimps. Boy, I wish I had my rubber hand. The first event is the tug of war. Our team holds on tightly to the rope. The giants give one yank, and we go sailing over the school. The next event is the soccer kick. They kick us instead of the ball, and we go sailing over the school again. After that, the bean bag toss starts, but the giant tusks us once again. We go sailing over the school. The last event is bubble gum blowout. Freddy is now able to get two hundred and forty pieces of bubble gum into his mouth. Then he blows a gigantic bubble. It gets bigger and bigger. He begins to float up. We grab on onto him, and together we all sail over the school. Our team is disqualified for leaving the playing field. I wake up and have fallen out of the bed, right into Friday. It's time for the field day. I hope our team's ready. Chapter nine. Let the games begin. On the bus to school, everyone is bragging. My team and Derek's teams are both bursting with boats and insults. We're a better, you're butter. They yell. Oh yeah, we're champ. We reply, you're chumps. Oh yeah, we're winners. They replied, you're whiners. Wow, that one kind of stung. Whatever, we're number one, and you're done. Our team yells out. All of you, cut that out, says Mister Fenderbender and the school bus driver. It's not whether you win or lose; it's how you play the game. That's right," says Eric, "and we'll play better than Derek's team." I don't think so," says Derek, "because we're going to crush you, then mush you, and afterward turn you into slush." The funny thing is, we were all good friends yesterday before we chose teams. Chapter Ten: Field of Battle. Well. We survived the trip to school, but now no one's talking to one another. We're all finely tuned athletes, focused on the challenges that lie before us. I feel like we're at the Olympic Games, marching out onto the field of battle. I knew I should have bought a lightning bar so I could fly away. Too late for that. As we arrived at station number one. The basketball shoot coach Kong is standing with his clipboard. Okay, he says. What are the team's names? Derek shouts out, "The Tigers!" Coach writes it down and turns to us. 
Oh my gosh, Eric and I didn't know that we had to have a team name. We both looked at each other. Then Penny shouts out, The Pussycats! Coach Kong writes it down. Meow, snickers Derek. This could be catastrophic, shouts Eric. Then Coach Kong gives out the basketballs. He hands one to Penny. She's our best free throw shooter. Sure enough, she sinks all of her baskets. Derek doesn't get any in and misses the backboard completely. We win the event and we put our best path forward. Station number two is the three-legged race. Coach ties my leg to Eric's and then ties De Eric's to Randy's. Then he yells, On your mark, get set, go! We're off and hobbling. I don't know how spiders walk with eight legs. Our legs get tangled and we fall over. It's obvious Derek and Randy have been practicing because they win by two noses. We're tied one to one. Next is the water balloon tossed and Derek's team drowns. They lose with a big splash. Our team floats to the top with a win. We're ahead two to one. But then they catch up in the ring toss. Randy is a ringer. I didn't know he was so good. But we pulled ahead with the hula hoop victory. Penny out wiggles Doris. She's really hip. The Tigers catch up in the bean bag toss. And we have our first casualty. Eric gets beaned with a bag and has to go see Miss Hearst. Derek calls Eric a beanie baby as he leaves the field. After a few minutes, Eric's back out of the field in a flash. He's hopping mad for the sack race. We bounce back into the lead by sacking them with a win. But then, the Tigers give us the booth and win the soccer kick contest. Now, we're all tied up again, going into the bubblegum blowout. Chapter 11. A Blowout Our hopes are riding on Freddy, who can now get 29 pieces of bubblegum into his mouth. Eric and I keep shoving it in until his cheeks are puffed out like softballs. When he tries to blow, Freddy just starts turning an odd shade of blue and we have to rush him to Miss Hurst, who does an emergency extraction with players. Derek's team wins the event. And our whole team is blue. But we rally and take the cake walk. It's tied again. Now it's all riding on the last event, the tug of war. Can we pull it off? Freddy, who is still a shade of aqua, is our anchor. The, tiger, the tiger's anchor is Doris. She looks pretty tough. We line up on the rope and spit on our hands. We're off. We huff and we puff, we tug and we chug, we yank and we crank, we leave and we haul, but nobody's budging at all, not even an inch. After 15 minutes of major exertion, Coach Kong blows his whistle and he declares a field day a tie. We let go off the rope and we all fall down, laughing and rolling around. Everyone's beat, but a winner. Chapter 12 Happy ending. So we all get to celebrate because we're all field day champs. As a reward, each of us gets a popsicle and a gold medal. Well, not really gold, but more like yellow cardboard medals made by Miss Swamp. But we wear our medals with pride on the bus ride home and talk all about what a great time we had at the field day. The field day totally rocked. Then we all laughed together, remembering all the fun stuff we had nothing to do with winning, like the water balloons bursting and the look on Freddy's face when he tried to blow a bubble. When I get home, I find my rubber band and throw it in the trash. I don't need a gimmick to be a winner. Maybe next year for the field day, I'll start exercising more and be as big as Mr. Universe. Well, maybe that's stretching it a little. At least, I know that it'll be a field day for fun.